Jesus does not call us where we are. Jesus calls his twelve disciples where they were in their lives as well. Scripture tells us that Peter and Andrew were called from their boats to drop their nets and follow Christ. James and John were called to leave their father and his boats behind. Philip and Nathaniel were challenged to get up and come in faith, believing that Christ is the Son of God. The disciples were called in the midst of their lives to stop what they were doing, to take up their cross, to come as they were and follow him. And that's just what they did. They took up their crosses instead of being rooted in their own ways of life and chose to learn the ways of Christ along the way. We too were called from the tools of our lives to take up our crosses and come as we are to follow Christ. And as disciples, we make a choice each day to learn something new about this Christ-like way of living and then we choose to put it into action. If we were to simply pick up our cross to continue focusing on our problems, if we refuse to dust ourselves off and refuse to press on through the tough times, our commitment to be true disciples of Christ will be nowhere near what he intends for them to be. As theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer talks about this book, The Cost of Discipleship, grace is not cheap, it is costly. Bonhoeffer says that costly, cheap grace is grace without discipleship, without the cross, but without Jesus Christ living and incarnate. Today, this is living a worldly life, sinning because we can and sinning because, God did, because everyone tells us that God's just going to forgive us anyways. The grace of Christ on the cross is not cheap by any means. Bonhoeffer says costly grace is costly because it costs a man's life to give man his only true life. The last thing that Jesus tells us to do in the text is to follow him. If anyone wants to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Jesus' disciples did just that. They followed him. They followed him into storms, as he performed miracles, as he showed grace and mercy to those he came in contact with, as he would teach and preach anyone who was willing to listen. They followed him from land to sea, from town to town, from house to house, and from the peak of his ministry to the cross, and from the cross to the tomb where they found it empty. Following Jesus is more than just retelling the, lot of the stories of his life and ministry that the Bible teach us. Following Christ means following the Spirit in today's time and being able to share how we follow Christ into a vocation, into a relationship, into an organization or into an event. And then being willing to share with others how our willingness to follow Christ affects our daily lives. Following Christ means that since we choose to deny ourselves and take up our cross, our lives reflect the life of Christ. Following Christ means imitating Christ. It means teaching, preaching the word, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, giving to the needy, loving those who feel unloved. Following Christ means that we walk the walk, which is his walk. It is not a once in a lifetime choice, but a daily necessity in the world which we live. It is so easy to get caught up in the ways of the world and forget about being set apart, to forget about the God that we serve, and to forget that we are called to be different. Forget that we are called to bear light. So why do we make this decision to follow Christ? It is what Christ calls us to do. It is not just how we think or what we say. It is in everything that we do. It is God's way of having a voice and an action in this sinful generation. It is hope for the generations that are to follow us. And it is a common ground which we share with people all across the world. As Christians, we always talk about this being set apart and being Christ-like. And according to the American Religious Identification Survey in 2008, 76% of Americans claim to be Christians. Do we act like a nation that is predominantly Christian? Do we love our neighbors as ourselves? Do we treat our bodies as if they are temples for the living God? Do our actions reflect those of Christ? If we claim to be Christians, Jesus says we have to act like it. We have to deny the world not ourselves, to take up our cross and follow him. Jesus does not give us a choice between the three. It's an all or nothing deal. And Jesus follows these three instructions to the disciples with two questions. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and 
forfeit their life? Indeed, can they get a return for their life? There's a story of a pastor who had just met a couple that moved into the community. And they were looking around at local churches and they asked him, What does your church have to offer us? What programs and activities do you have? What are your facilities like? What is your church like compared to the others that we visited? And the pastor smiled and looked at him and said, You'll love our church. If you come to our church, we'll kill you. <laughs> Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.